Hi, Mike Masters from GE Aviation's Customer Training Services in Cincinnati. And in the CF6 Maintenance Minute, we're going to be looking uh, specifically at the uh, CF6 ADE1 model uh, fuel interstage strainer. The strainer design has changed uh, a little bit recently. And uh, what we're going to look at specifically is proper installation of the packings, the O-ring and the backup ring associated with the strainer. Now, there are two methods by which we can install these packings. I'm going to call them a preferred method and then uh, an alternate method, and I'll show you both of those methods as we go. The preferred method of installing the packings on this interstage uh, strainer element is by using some tooling that was designed by the same company that makes the strainer itself. Uh, it includes this uh, sort of bullet-shaped uh, fitting that's going to go over the strainer. And here we have a sizing die, which also works very well as a strainer holder as you uh, perform this process. And then uh, also, uh, you'll want to find uh, some clamps. Uh, your services engineering can provide uh, suitable part numbers for clamps. You'll see what these are for here in just a moment. And then finally, this, uh, this plastic pushing device. So right now, I'm going to lubricate the backup ring itself with our white petroleum jelly. Make sure it's nice and slick. And I'm also going to lubricate this, this fixture right here, our guide tool. A nice uniform coat all the way around and all the way down to the bottom of it. Now we can install our lubricated backup ring and then we'll use our plastic pusher tool on top here uh, to push this thing into position. One trick here is you want to push the backup ring into position as quickly as you possibly can, like this. So our, our problem here is now by pushing the backup ring uh, over that tooling fixture, it's going to be a little oversized. You can see I'm able to push on one side of it and it extrudes out the other side of the strainer. If you see any uh, bending or warping of the backup ring, we can take that out with some plastic tweezers like these. Uh, we wouldn't want to use metal. We wouldn't want to scratch or score uh, the sealing surface of the, the strainer element. Uh, right there, for example, a little, bit of a, a little bit of a bend, a little bit of a warping with my plastic tweezers. I'm just going to bend it the opposite way, release it. There we go. Now it's, it's much flatter. So now we, uh, we go on to addressing uh, the issue of being slightly stretched over size, and that's where our clamps come into play. We've discovered that while performing the process you're about to see to, uh, to reduce the, uh, the oversized condition of the backup ring, it's really helpful to also have the O-ring installed. So I'm applying the lubricant, petroleum jelly, to the O-ring as well. Just slip it over into position. And then guide it into the groove, as you see there. And this is where our clamp comes into play. Uh, again, uh, your services engineering group can provide uh, specific part numbers for clamps that they found uh, that are good for this task. Really anything that's the right size will do, as long as it's smooth on the inside diameter. Uh, you wouldn't want a, a typical hose clamp that has the holes, you know, to allow the, the worm gear to adjust the, the diameter of it to, uh, to be pushing, you know, making direct contact with our packings. But anything that's smooth on the inside, like this one, that should do the job. So what we're going to do is install our clamp, make sure it's level with the, uh, the base of the strainer element here, and I'm just going to tighten it down. There we go, nice and snug. And now we're just gonna let this sit for a good five minutes. Okay, our five minutes are up. So let's remove the clamp and see what we have. There we are, looks pretty good. And now this is the purpose of, the actual purpose of the sizing die. I'm gonna slip the sizing die over the sizing die is, is basically going to simulate the bore of the fuel pump housing that the strainer will be installed in. So if the sizing die 
fits over our packings with no binding, no pinching, like that, all the way down. We know our, our backup ring has been uh, shrunken back into proper dimension. So this is the preferred method of installing that backup ring. If you can procure the tooling that I've detailed here in this video, uh, again, this is the preferred method. It makes life much easier for you. Okay, the alternate procedure for installing this backup ring is just to go purely by hand. If you do not have this tooling or you do not have it yet, perhaps it's on order, you can still install the backup. You'll notice this gap in the strainer structure right here. That's where I like to start with my lubricated backup ring. I'll position this backup ring over that gap in the strainer. And simply push it into position. And then down into the groove. Uh, now with this, this hand installation method, I can pretty much guarantee you that you will have more of this twisting, uh, this bending of the backup ring. So again, with our plastic tweezers, we're going to go around and sort of take that bend out by bending it in the opposite direction. And then we'll go on with our O-ring. The reason I like to install the O-ring, if I didn't point it out before, is by having the O-ring in position, it helps that packing to resume its normal shape. There we go. O-ring and backup ring are in normal position. And then again with our clamp. Okay, our five minutes have elapsed. We'll loosen our clamp. And there we go, that looks pretty good. Now remember, if you don't have the tooling that I detailed before, you're not gonna have the sizing die uh, to verify that the packings are uh, you know, not protruding too much from the groove. So uh, just remember, as the strainer is installed in the fuel pump, uh, go very slow, uh, make sure the packings are not binding on the bore inside the fuel pump and you'll be okay. That's it for CF680E1 fuel strainer packing installation. Hope you enjoy the maintenance minute and I'll see you next time.